some terminologies here so you have a menu bar on the top left something quite similar to many other software file view tools help and so on then you have here on the right hand side a toolbar or not toolbar actually a selection of several tools where there is SOLIDWORKS resources design library and so many other things okay so let me show you so here is this menu on the top and you can basically uh, through file start and open something create new something it's quite limited right now but once you start and go into part design or assembly or something you see this guy will be extended to several items okay and as i said here this is solidworks resources which um, if you click on then it can give you some of the resources online resources uh, and some basic things which you don't use too much we have solidworks help here and solidworks help is not quite bad actually it's relatively good way better than katia not probably as extensive as matlab help but it is quite nice there is a student curriculum in it for teaching classes for us basically there are resources for you guys instructors curriculum and tutorials okay these are really good so if you want to learn about it if you want to know more about creating parts assemblies drawings okay so once you go there there are basically uh, some basic things that it talks about okay so it's not probably as complete as what we go in this course through but it is a good starter for yourself so take a look at that the other thing that i really really like about solidworks is the design library okay and especially under that this toolbox if you click on toolbox and then make sure the add-in is activated you will see a library of so many standard pre-made parts based on different standards like us ANSI inch or ANSI metric or ISO standard or DIN for Germany or IS for India and so on and so forth JIS for Japan so these are a lot of pre-built standard files so if you go under ANSI inch then you can basically uh, just uh, get one of the bearings right so you go here and then go under either roller or ball bearing and then just bring one of them here just drag and drop it and there we go okay this is a ball bearing and creating that you need to do some stuff to make it properly constrained on everything but it's just available for you there or let's say you go here you want a gear gears as we'll see later are hard parts to make so you go under gears and then there is chain sprocket here timing belts and pulleys and then gears let's say you want a straight bevel gear or a helical gear or anything like that right so you bring a straight bevel gear here okay and again as i said making this part is not really easy although it looks like easy but the profile for the teeth of a gear is actually quite difficult okay so we'll talk about these but always uh, once you learn the basics you can take advantage of this you want the structural members from steel there are all sorts of beams here you want bolts and knots there are a ton of bolts and knots here different categories right so uh, there are some standard nice parts here that you can always take advantage of so uh, Katia's library is just very minimal compared to SOLIDWORKS library and I'll show you later if you want to save one of these and then open it in Katia and use it I'll show you later but uh, just take advantage of this whenever possible okay then so now we want to create a new document right so we click on new here or do a control N 
and then it allows us to create one of these three types either create a part a single part if you have several of them and we want to put them together it allows us to assemble and then if you want to create the uh, technical drafting right those uh, orthographic multi-view uh, projections and add dimension tolerance and so many other things and send to the manufacturer that's where you go but everything starts from creating single individual parts and then you can assemble you can create drafting and everything so typically that's first place you want to go if you want to create new parts you can also click on advance and then it talks a little bit more and uh, you can look at the tutorials you can set your levels uh, and see more bars or have templates but I don't think you need to go there right now I just say part is good enough and uh, I start here right so as I said when you get into the part design now your menu is extended so now you have file edit view insert tool simulation and window and then you can use this to basically hide or show some of them good so now when you open it and you see this um, window in the part design there are some terminologies that i want you to learn so as i said this top one we call it the uh, menu bar right but we have a bunch of tabs here each one is for a separate operation or set of operations we call it the command manager up there okay then we have here what we call in this software and many other software we call it a tree and here we call it basically feature manager or manager feature manager design tree okay so this is i just call it tree i don't call it feature manager tree or something then uh we have a triad which shows us the direction of X, Y, and Z axes, right? We have these different windows that is for creating models, 3D views. Uh, we can add motion study later. We have the origin here. We have the view toolbar. Again, here it's called heads up view toolbar, but we never say that. So it's just view toolbar. We'll work with this a lot. So what we really need to know, that's the menu up there. This is the command manager, feature manager. This collection that I mentioned, we call it the task pane. We call it the task pane, but um, we really mostly work with uh, the design library. And then as I said, origin, triad, then here down here, you can set the units whether you want standard ISO units or uh, basically ANSI units or any SAE units, whatever tags, we don't need to be concerned about them. So these are some of these standard things that you can see here, right? So this is your view toolbar, that's your tree. These are all I have added and these are basically the uh, feature manager. And then we have basically several tabs here too configuration manager property manager fee this is the feature manager but the other tabs you have property manager which we don't deal with right now later we will look at configurations dim expert we don't use a lot and appearance we will use later on so uh, okay and as i said each one of these tabs has its own toolbars so we're going to work with several of these right and this is our task pane the origin uh, is not directly shown but we can see it later and this is our triad right here is basically your system so right now it is inch pound mass and seconds okay so this is ips you can change it to mmgs millimeter gram seconds or mks or cgs or so on so if you want to stick to inches you probably leave it here i also show you later when you go to tools and then go down to options here also you can change the units of everything as well okay so uh just want to give you an overall idea 
Now, as I said, we have feature manager and feature manager, there is a roll back bar and suppressing and unsuppressing. Okay, so let's talk about this a little bit. Now, since we gonna create parts from uh, two videos from now, I don't want you to make something right now. I just want you to go and download a part already made from uh, Canvas, or you can get one of them from this library here. Okay, so you can do either one. If you want anything on Canvas, you just go here under Modules. And then if you go down, there are different parts here under Demo Files, so you can get them as well. So it is completely up to you what you want to get, but there are some parts here. And as I said, you can get some parts from here as well, right? So let's say um, if I want to get a part from Canvas, let's, let's get something from here. And um, let's look at these multiple features. That could be a nice one. So we click on this multiple features, SLDPRT file. Right, so I downloaded it, and now I can just go and open the thing, right? So I go under my downloads, and here we go. Okay, and you can move these guys out of the way and make your window as big as possible. Okay, so first thing is this tree here will show a lot of things okay on the top of it you have the part the name of the part there is a history which we don't want to basically work with it at the moment sensors way beyond the scope of this course at the moment annotations no solid bodies no we don't really work with them right now here is where you can assign a material to the body we'll do that later here are the three standard planes, front, top, and right. If you want to start drawing something on them, then there is origin, okay, which is up here. And then under origin, in a chronological order, in a timely order, you see what you made from beginning to the end. So what I did first was I created this bus extrude okay so I did the extrude so I drew a T sketch and then extruded it make it 3d made it 3d then I created the single hole then I used the pattern and created all of these guys and then I mirrored them with respect to mid plane and added the rest of the holes on the other side too okay so this is in order of what I started and what I ended. Now, any of these features that I made, I can go ahead and either delete them or suppress them. What does that mean? So here, let's say I want to get rid of these holes. So one way to do it is, of course, you right click on it and say what? Delete. Get rid of it for me. There we go. Yes, they're gone. Now, if you want them back, just do a control Z. Now, sometimes you don't want to delete something. You just temporarily want to disable it in order to investigate something else or see the effect of something else. You do not really want to delete it because once they are deleted and you save it and uh, you do some other modifications, then even if you do control Z, you might not get it back. So I don't recommend you delete something unless you really want to do so. What I recommend is you right click on it and then come here on this top option and this second one on the top says suppress and when you click on it that goes inactive you see that mirror feature is still there but it's grayed out which means it is inactive or suppressed anytime I want I can bring it back I just right click here and say what now unsuppress it and it comes back okay so it's a temporarily disabling of something the other thing I have is this bar which we call a rollback bar 
what is this? So wherever this rollback bar is, anything you made above the bar will be active. Anything that goes below the bar will automatically be suppressed. So for example, I can move this guy up two features. So I move it above the pattern and above the mirror and look. Yes, these guys that are below it, it's like I have suppressed them, right? The pattern is not there and the uh, mirror is not there. Although they, they're there, they're just uh, uh, suppressed. So whatever I put below this guy will be suppressed, right? And I can bring them back and just move it and uh, basically bring it back. So moving the rollback bar, okay? will do the job of suppressing or unsuppressing and uh, you can even right click on it okay you can even right click on it and move it although it's easier probably to just uh, drag and move it okay but uh, you can do that as well so here i just if i bring it back again to here right so if I right click on this guy instead of grabbing it, I can go roll to previous. So it goes to previous location it had. Or I can say roll to the end, which means move all the way to the end. So here, look, this is one. And if I go here and say roll to previous, it comes back to the previous location, not all the way to the end. Okay, so you can by right click, you can also move it too but i recommend you just move your mouse hold down left mouse key and drag it okay the other thing we have which is extremely important is this um, view toolbar so in view toolbar you can manipulate the object you can change the rendering of the object you can show something you can hide something you can even apply a cosmetic section and see inside the part so there are a lot of things that you can do and I'm going to show them. And plus, not only you can click on these items and do it, then also from your keyboard or your mouse, there are some shortcuts that you can do to uh, basically execute those commands instead of just clicking on them. So uh, here, if we go, let's see. So. First of all, let's say I want to uh, rotate this object or pan it. Two common operations that you have is you want to rotate the object to see different uh, orientations of it, or you want to pan, P-A-N, right? Which basically translate the object left and right, above and below, and forward, backwards, right? Without changing the orientation. So pan and rotation are two common operations and in Katia there is actually a command in the view toolbar for each one of them. Here in SolidWorks if you want to do that you right click and then you have the commands when you right click. So when you right click you're going to get this menu we call it the contextual menu and there is the pan which is like a cross and there is rotate right a curved arrow. So if I click on pan now look, if I drag, so I clicked on the object and now I can what? Drag, you see, I move the object around without changing the orientation of it. I can also right click and say, no, I want to rotate the view or roll the view. Roll is more limited than rotate. So I say, I want to rotate and now what? You see, again, I hold down my left mouse key and drag. Yes. So I can rotate the object in any direction that I want, although it's not perfectly under control, but uh, you can really do that. Okay, so if you want to uh, rotate or pan, you just basically do what I said, right click. You can also zoom in and zoom out using the same menu. So if you right click here, then it gives you what? Basically zoom in and zoom out. So if you click here, it gives you the magnifying glass. And then if you hold down left mouse key, 
if you move it in different directions up or down then you can zoom in or zoom out right so let's say sometimes I make this part too small and I even pan it out of the center so it's completely off like this okay so the part is a small the orientation is not what I want and uh, it is completely off center how can I get it back well you probably say first pan it to the center then uh, basically zoom in and then change the orientation yes you can do all that but that takes some time the best way to do it is first fix the size and the location by just clicking on the first command up here zoom to fit or you can use F from the keyboard you see in front of it you can see F so all I need is either click on this or from your keyboard I use F there we go automatically it is resized and relocated to best of display now I want to change the orientation okay this command does not change the orientation for me right it does not so if I want to fix the orientation I can go under view orientation or I can of course I can uh, do a rotate view but I can also go here under view orientation there is a small triangle if I click on it I expand it and then what I can see different views so I can look at the front view of the part right I can look at the left view, right view, above, below, anything, right? Or typically I put it what? In the blue cube isometric, which you can also do using control 7 of your keyboard. Correct? So I put it in isometric view. Also, you probably uh, paid attention that when I click on this, the glass box would appear around the object and if I click on any face of this glass box I can see the object in a direction perpendicular to that surface so if I click here I would see it from top if I click here is front if I click here is right yes so you see All right Another way, instead of just going and clicking on this, you can simply use escape, uh, I'm sorry, space, space from the keyboard, space. If you click on space, the glass box would appear again and you can see in different directions, right? So you can bring this glass box back by simply clicking on the space from the keyboard. And as I said, again, if you want the... Uh, isometric orientation you can just do control and then seven and you bring it back this guy was zoom to fit which was F now if you want to zoom in a specific area and see it magnified you can use this guy here zoom to area so you click on it and then you draw with your mouse a rectangle around the area you are interested in so I want to zoom into that area you see, so I'm drawing by holding down left mouse key and dragging a rectangle around the area I'm interested in, and then I let go. Yes, and it zooms into that area for me. So I can do basically selective zoom, and then I can bring it back whenever I'm done. Okay, so I showed you basically seeing different views zoom to fit, zoom to specific area, pan, rotate, zoom in and zoom out, right? This view orientation, we don't really need to talk about it right now. It doesn't add too much for me. So let me show you the ones that are really important at the moment. Uh, one of them is rendering or display style, what we call it here. So under this, there are different ways to display your part. The top, the top one is the default one, which is shaded with edges. What does it mean? It means the part, all faces of the part always are shaded. They have a color, which the default is gray. And the edges are colored differently, right? The edges, as you can see, are colored black. So the edges are distinguished from the rest of the part. 
Now, if you choose this one, which is shading without edges, then the edges are not distinguished from the rest. And this is basically how any part would look like in real life. So we can do that as well. There are other things too. This one is hidden line removed. So this is going to be like the part is made of glass. And when you view it, anything that is hidden, you cannot see. Now, what if you want to see the hidden stuff? Then you can click on this one. So it shows those hidden features with dashed lines. Or you can use the wireframe, which shows everything with visible lines, whether hidden or not. Okay, so this is completely glass object. And these, this view and the previous one are very good for seeing anything that is inside the object, which you cannot normally see in front view, top view, or right view. Okay, so if you want to see inside or behind the object or something, these two are quite useful. I go with the typical one, shading with uh, basically edges. So this is different ways to color and shade the part. By the way, uh, there are a couple of things uh, that I want to mention also about pan, rotate, zoom in and zoom out, which you can do with the keyboard and mouse, right? Because as I said, you can right click and then choose these guys, but there is an easier way to. So if you want to rotate the object, you don't need to every time right click and choose rotate view. All you need to do from your keyboard is to use left, right, up and down arrows. The arrows on your keyboard, right now I'm clicking on them, they can easily rotate the object for you. And that's one of the best things in SolidWorks. So if you want to rotate, I recommend you just use arrows. They are way easier than right clicking every time and choose rotate view. If you want to pan the object, so basically move it without changing the orientation of it. You want to move the part without changing orientation. You can still use arrows, but you have to hold down control. So you hold down control. Now look. Yes, I can pan it move it so if you don't hold down control you rotate it if you hold down control you pan it now how can i zoom in and zoom out all you need is the scroll button of your mouse that's all look i'm scrolling in and scrolling out and even if i hold my cursor onto a specific area and scroll then i'm zooming onto that area so let's say right now i want to zoom here right so i bring my curse uh, mouse cursor over there and zoom yes now let's say this time i want to zoom into that area so i take my mouse over there and zoom you see so i can basically do zoom in zoom out and also this zoom to area with scroll if my mouse cursor is in the right location and i mentioned that for you here right the space the arrows control arrows uh scroll of the mouse right control seven for sync isometric we'll talk about control maybe i can show you control eight or normal view right now there is also Z and Shift Z that you can do for zoom in and zoom out. So if you want to zoom out, you can also do Z. And for zoom in, you can do Shift, hold down Shift and then do Z. That's also another way. So here, look. If I do Z, I'm zooming out. If I hold down Shift and do Z, then I'm zooming what? In. Okay. So these are very useful. The other thing I mentioned is called normal view. So if you want to see normal to a face, right? I choose this face, right? I click on this face and then I want to see in a perpendicular direction to that face, regardless of whether it's front, right? Not always a face is uh, parallel to any of the main three views, correct? So I want to see normal to this. So you see, if I click one time, left click, it gives me an option. And one of them is this guy, normal to. So I can see normal to that face, right? Another way to do it is if you just click on the face without choosing this, you can do control eight. Control, hold down, control seven, what isometry? Control eight is normal to, like that. 
Okay, so there are a bunch of keyboard and mouse shortcuts that I recommend if you learn them. They're way easier than each time you right click on something. Okay, they're way easier. Uh, I talked about shading. Now let me talk about a few other things. Uh, one of the things that you have is this eye. And this eye will allow you to show or not show some of the stuff. Like for example, when you go to sketch and you want to draw a 2D profile, you can show the grid behind it or not show the grid, right? You can show the centroid of the object or not show the centroid of the object. Uh, basically, you can show the origin or not, correct? You can see temporary axis. So each object that has an axis of symmetry, like the cylindrical surfaces, they have their own axis of symmetry, but they are not shown. But if you go here and say enable temporary axis, right? You can see all of them here, the dash dotted lights in blue. So this guy will be quite handy later when we get to it, okay? This V1. Uh, then this one here, view setting, if you expand it, you can have different overall rendering so you can cartonize your object. You can apply perspective view. So right now it's in parallel view, but you can make it perspective. And then you can uh, look at the ambient occlusion, okay, which is basically about shadows. We'll talk about, uh, no, actually about um, the ambient light. And then shadows, you see here, I have shadows now. I can get rid of them. So if I undo it, look below the object, you see the shadow, now look. They're gone. So you can add shadow or not shadow. You can cartonize or not cartonize. So there are all sorts of things that you can do here. Uh, then we'll talk later. Or you know what? Let me talk right now. Let's not talk later. You can apply uh, appearance, although we'll go in more detail about that in part design, but you can edit the appearance of the part. So here you can click on this and then you can choose a different color for the object, right? So I can make this object to be orange instead of red. Under basics, if I go under advanced, then there are different ways to eliminate the object. And if I go here under uh, basically uh, elimination, then one of the th nice things you can do about the object is transparency. So you can make the object transparent while it is still what? It is still shaded, right? So I can make the object transparent if I want to. So there are all sorts of things you can do. You can even look at different textures for the object under appearance, right? You can apply different textures. We'll talk about them. You can add decals, the logos of your company, and so on, right? And we'll talk later. You can change the lighting of the scene. You can um, basically change the cameras. So there are so many things that when we get to it, we'll talk about it. But these are different light sources, right? So this is ambient. There are three light sources. You can see them if you want. So these are the lights that are basically eliminating the object and you can basically edit them. This is the ambient light. If you turn it off, the object will go darker, of course, right? You can uh, change anything you want. So let's say I want to go and say edit light. Again, we'll go through this and I change the light intensity of the environment, right? I can even change the color of the light of the environment. And there are so many things that you can do, okay? So just wanted you to know the options as later we are going to go through these parts. And then you can change the background scene, okay? So if you click here, you can make it plain white instead of the shaded gray color, which is the default here. You can make it like a rooftop. You can make it like a 
soft spotlight so there are you see it's like it is in a room or something that's quite interesting can even add nice backgrounds like put it in the courtyard or uh, put it basically in an urban environment or if you want more you go to manage favorites and then whatever one of these views that you want right you are a nature person add this one then maybe add this one right just check them and they will be available for you add this one and okay them now they are here too right so i can put it behind something else so these are what we'll talk about later for rendering but just wanted you to know that there are all sorts of things that you can apply okay so one last thing i want to talk about is this cosmetic section view so if you click on this then you can cut the object with a plane and then you can move that plane around you can rotate it in any direction that you want and then you can see what you can see inside the object okay so you can look at the sections of the object if you keep it on the object is apparently cut but it's not really it's just cut as long as this option is on. so when you click on this object this uh, icon here this command and turn it off the object will go back to what it was now another option we have when you right click on something about views is called zoom to selection which is like a magnifier with an equal sign on it and that is good when you have basically a complicated big assembly and you just want to zoom on one of the components right so here is this model of the campus uh, miniature model that you can see in the stem building probably you all pass this big table in the stem in the middle of the stem first floor this uh, campus uh, miniature model which is my class project on uh, it was in uh, spring of 2019 so yes it is my SOLIDWORKS the first time I offer SOLIDWORKS I had my students model the whole campus and they did each one of them I gave them if it was a hard building like AC1 or STEM they had one if they were those small offices I gave them several and all I gave them was the floor plan of the buildings which you can find on S drive and then they modeled all of the buildings the scaling is 340 to 1 and uh, then we 3d printed all of the buildings the students painted all of them and then we one of the students with me we put the um, uh, campus landscaping the parking lots the green areas and everything on the uh, topography of the campus so if you look here this bottom this bottom plane is not flat if you look at it it has actually ups and downs right so some parts are thinner some parts are thicker and that elevation of the campus or topography of the campus is actual and it's realistic we got it from google maps so we even have campus uh, topography we printed that as well in uh, 25 pieces large pieces and then we glued all the buildings on we landscaped them we added mini lights mini people so many things right i got some budget from the campus enhancement committee SCAF, about uh, seven thousand dollars i guess and uh, it took a year and we made every single thing including the tables if you look at even the tables we bought them but then we put the two tables together the skirt that goes all around everything the glass enclosure the plexiglass enclosure everything we did here on campus and we made this monument and the name of everybody who contributed to it is on a small frame that is glued to the one side of the table this project if you ask an external company to make it for you it worth about or it cost about 100k 
Okay, so if you wanted some outside company, we gave them the floor plan of the building, say, hey, you go and make this for me. They would charge us 100K easily to have that done. But we did it ourselves, all pro bono, and we just paid like, uh, Skeff gave us $7,000 for the material only. Okay, but yes, this is what you guys can do as well, okay? You can do a lot of nice things once you're equipped with the power of a CAD software and design, and then you can basically use 3D printers, 3D scanners, CNC machines, and so on. You can do all sorts of things, okay? So just I wanted you to tell, wanted you to know that what kind of projects I gave in the past to my uh, CAD class. Okay, and uh, the students were really happy about it. This is AC1, they have all of the details. This is one of the buildings I made myself. Each building has a number on it too. So, uh, yeah, visit that if you haven't. That's a nice thing to see. Okay, now, in here, there are tons of buildings, right? There are 60, 70 buildings, a lot of pieces and everything. Even fighter jets, everything is there. And now I want to see, let's say, one small building or one of the shades or something here. So I have a huge list on the left side because it's a big assembly. And in that big assembly, each part has what? One tab for itself. And when you expand it, then you can see everything that was done under that part. So it, you can imagine it is going to be a huge thing, right? I don't know if I can access it right now and open it, but it is actually a uh, gigantic thing and uh, I'm not sure if I have it right now, but um, I have to find the files. But if you want to just focus on one specific buildings, instead of you going and digging through all the models in the assembly and finding it, you just right click on it and say zoom to selection. So here, let's see if I have an assembly that's worth looking. Uh, SolidWorks files, maybe. And um, I don't think I have anything really super difficult here. Maybe this piston assembly. Okay, so this is an assembly, and it has four components, right? And these four components are, of course, the two parts of the conrod that form the bearing, and then you have a, uh, basically, pin that connects the piston to conrod and then the piston itself, right? So if you go here, as I said, this is an assembly, and it has four components, Although the example I had for campus is way more complicated, but let's say even here, you want to know which one is pin, right? So all you need is here, you right click on the pin and then go up here in this menu and then say what? Zoom to selection. So it will find it for you in this huge big thing and zoom onto that component for you like that, right? Or let's say here, I want to know which one is this um, clamp. So I just go and say zoom to it and then it finds it for me. Believe me here, it's quite easy. Whenever you click on each one, it goes blue. So you can see that one is selected. But when I was doing that thing here with so many small and big buildings, some of those buildings were kind of hidden behind everything else. So when I clicked and there was the list, instead of four items here, it was like 80 items or 100 items. So it was hard to just find it among those big number of other buildings. So I just right click, but it was so big, I couldn't see which one turned blue. So I just zoomed to selection and it directly took me there. Uh, I talked about shading, hide and show, section view. We'll talk about different things in Command Manager. We go through them one by one later. Uh, feature Manager, I guess I mentioned briefly, but we go over each one of them later on. I'll talk about the design library. So the only thing left is selection enhancement. 
and the other tool which is really interesting and useful again later on so let me talk about other and selection enhancement as well okay and um, We'll finish this uh, lecture. So, um, if you just right click here in the blank area, this top menu up here is the selection enhancement. Now, by default, if you want to grab something or select something, right, you can click on it, correct? You can click on any entity that you want. Or if you want to select several at the same time, you can just what? Drag your window around it like this, and then all of them will be selected, right? So the default method for selecting several things in SOLIDWORKS is a rectangular, basically, frame around all of them. Then all of them will be selected, correct? Yes? So I can show you better in this sketch, maybe. So here in this sketch, I have so many lines and I can select each one of them separately, right? When they go blue, they are highlighted and I can do whatever I want to them. Or I want to select, let's say, a bunch of them so I can just draw a line like this. And then anything that is completely inside the rectangle is chosen for me, right? That's one way, but the other way is basically uh, the uh, lasso so if you go here under selection tools you can have a lasso and a lasso is more flexible than a rectangular box right okay so you can draw any arbitrary shape around any area and then anything falling inside it will be chosen okay you see even this part of this line is a little bit selected so you can do a lasso instead of a um, um, box, okay? So, and you can see the lasso here too. Then you can have selection filters if you want. So right now you can select anything you want. You can select a face, you can select a vertex, right? So you see, here I'm clicking on a vertex. I can select an edge, I can select a face or anything I want. So I can select anything, but if you go here, then you can filter that out. So instead of general thing, you can say, I only want to be able to pick up on vertices, nothing else. So if you do that, then look, when I move my mouse over this face, if I click, it's not going to pick it up because it's a face. Or if I go on edge, it's not going to pick up an edge. But if I go over what? any vertex it will be activated and I can pick it right or I go here and say no actually I just want to be able to select edges so now look I can select edges right I cannot select the face right now correct or let's say I just want to be able to select surfaces or faces then I can only select faces. Look, I cannot select an edge. Although I try to click on this edge, but it selects the surface ending to that edge. You see? Because selecting edge is uh, filtered out. Okay? If I don't turn any of them on, then I can select anything I want. The other thing interesting is select other. So sometimes, you want to access this plane here but it is occluded by something else like let's say it's an assembly and this face there is something on it that you cannot select okay there is something on that that you cannot select maybe i have something to show you maybe one of those uh pendulum ones can help me um Show you what I mean. So here, I have a pendulum made, right? And this is an assembly. Correct. 
and here if I want to select this pin right this pin if I want to select the cylindrical surface of the pin not the front end not the back end I want to select the cylindrical surface of this pin how can I select it because it's completely occluded by other objects so one way to select it to do something with it is you have to hide this guy right so you have to right click on this guy and then go to what hide component okay if I hide this now I can choose the surface yes so that's one way and by the way anything that is hidden in the tree anything that is hidden the part icon for it instead of being yellow it goes white okay so if you see any item has a white icon instead of yellow it means that guy is hidden you can right click on it and then say what click on this eye and say show it back so that's one way to choose the surfaces that are occluded by others the other way to do it is this you right click on a surface that has a connection to your desired surface so this one I know is on the edge it is touching that surface that I want so I right click here and then go up there right let's see here right and then this tool here on the bottom left corner says select others you see when you click on this then it will allow me to choose what the surfaces of the parts that are in connection with that or adjacent so you see here yeah it gives me this window and if I click on this this is actually what the guy that I chose right look at it here again I hide that so that you can see ah now You see if I click on here now it allows me to choose that surface without the need to what to hide I don't need to hide that anymore I just right click and say what select it gives me all different things that are in contact with it and I can choose any of them that I want right so like anything other surface than this that has a connection and I choose this one and I already chose it without hiding anything Okay, so that option of select others, hide and show are some other important things. Again, you can right click on anything you want, anything, whether it is a, an entire part like this and hide it or show it, or it is a single component, right? So if you just have a single part, and the single part has several different features you can also right click on that feature and say what hide it for me the problem is sometimes when you hide something since it is attached to the rest of it it will hide the whole thing okay so it's not as simple as an assembly with different components that's one thing you need to pay attention to the other thing is this so here, let's say I want to get rid of um, the uh, hole here. How can I do that? Well, if I right click here and say delete, right, it goes away. But the sketch that I used to create this part remains. Okay, and I can use it or I can delete this one as well you see here it says sketch the 2d profile and I can delete that as well separately another way is if you don't want the sketch as well you want to delete the feature and the sketch you right click here and say delete but here you also check this mark it says delete absorbed feature which means anything that is related to that get rid of that as well and now look you see the circle is also gone so that's another thing that we'll emphasize later also again in part design but i just wanted you to know what does deleting absorbed feature means okay